Six All right, I call the meeting uh, to order for the Dighton Water District at uh, 6.05 p.m. And let's all rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first order of business, uh, our guest, Chuck, with Environmental Partners, to give us some uh, project updates. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to come to the last meeting. I wasn't available, so I thought I'd uh, come and give you an update on the Cedar Street Well Number One replacement project. Um, we're basically moving forward. Um, Frank Sullivan's been out there with um, FG Sullivan Drilling Company and they've finished uh, drilling of the production well and now they're just waiting for the screen to come in. So they ordered the screen and they anticipate that that'll be in the next couple of weeks so that they can uh, put the screen down and, and then do the pump test. Um, basically, um, MassDEP requires that we do this 48-hour uh, pump test to determine that obviously the capacity of the well is there and that the water quality is good. And after we get the results of that pump test, um, we'll prepare a well completion and a pump test report that will be submitted to MassDEP for their approval. And that's really the first step in that uh, permitting process where before we go to design and connect the well to the, to the system, we have to make sure that it has adequate capacity and water quality so that um, it satisfies the needs. But we don't foresee any issues with that. There was one thing that came up during uh, the, the well drilling process and that they went through a lens of silty material and Frank made the recommendation that um, they leave the casing in down to, I think, I, uh, um, 24 feet below the ground surface so that it prevents that fine or silty material from getting into the well and right. into the stream. So um, it's a good recommendation. The, the gravel down below is fine. So we should get the capacity that we need. We just don't want those fines to migrate into the uh, into the to the screen so that you'll um, have issues with that down the road. But okay. the good thing is is that you know obviously when we get this thing online we'll have a, a much higher capacity in the well, which is what we're looking for. Um, the first couple of points, um, we've been working with Jeff. Um, he's gonna install two raw water hydrants on the raw water system so that we can run our pump tests and our, our hydrant flow tests. The other thing we were talking about is um, when he flushes that raw water line, he's been doing it through the system, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at potentially flushing from the treatment plant the other way, and then mm -hmm. flushing out to uh, the hydrants that he's installing, and then also down at the Cedar Street well field, so that you're not disturbing the water in the system. So, that's a great idea. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. You know waste uh, you know the water to the system and then cause right. disturbance for the customers so they'll be uh, contained to the raw water side right. so that's a benefit to having those items there in the future as well okay. we, we picked a couple of locations one of them is right next to the to the um uh, the treatment plant another one that's down so it's the intersection of cedar and the cedar tree um can we rehash that one tomorrow yeah sure. just because i'd like to hear about it at least one next week yeah. And I can't remember the other one as well. And you know, we, we had changed yeah. one of the spots and we were okay with it, I think. Yeah, yeah that's that right? correct. Yeah, I think it's just that we wanted one that was an uh, intermediate uh, length that was just a little bit longer. Basically, what we're going to do, the reason why we're installing, it's good for the flushing, but it's, it, it'll provide us with pressures along the raw water line so that we can see where the restrictions are. I mean, I think that I'm talking to Greg and Jeff, we know that it's probably down at the, the Cedar Street well field where the pipes go down to really small diameters and cause the pumps to go back on the curves. It'll be better so that you can, you know, put a grade line through the, the that raw water main to see where it's going to be and then we'll make recommendations on how you can improve that. So okay. um, that's the deal we're looking at there. Um, and we're a little bit behind schedule only because Sullivan got out there a little bit late and then the screen, because we had this problem in other projects too where the screen was uh, a little bit harder to, uh, to get and deliver just because of the and 
I was going to say, so that screen, that was one of my questions actually, it's, it's a common thing for it to happen, keeping the screen in there because of the silt and, and all that? Uh, yeah, well, um, the configuration of the well, um, we're going to keep the, the casing down there to prevent the pines from going in. Yeah. Um, that, that is something that happens, you know, during, and that's why we do this, you know, full production well installation and pump test to make sure that we know exactly, you know, that there aren't any um, concerns about what we're doing. And that was the only concern that Frank brought up. He says that once you get down into the green length uh, area, that the gravel is good and you'll have good, um, you know, you'll be able to get the groundwater. Um, and that, that screen stays down there, correct? Yeah, that, that screen is basically in all wells. You have a section of screen that basically it's a perforated pipe, obviously, that brings the water up, um, you know, uh, with a submersible pump, and that will be connected to, to the piping system that will take it up to the well field. But yeah, that screen, that bottom part of it, and I think it's normally like it could be five to ten feet. I don't know exactly what this one is uh, because we don't have the final well configuration until we've done, but. Uh, he has this, this green order that it should be there in a couple of weeks. So. That, that's why we're like, uh, even if we're behind the window, that's kind of why we like using Frank. He's the godfather of drilling around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's great. I mean, and, and the other thing too is he's kind of busy. I know that he was, oh, yeah. he was in the sea pond doing work and, and, and got that one up here. here. <laughs> and then, um, you know, obviously he made it down as soon as he can. And, uh, he had some other job in Auburn too, so I mean, he's been extremely busy. But, he's working away. So, oh, yeah, he's, we, we work with Frank and sometimes exclusively Frank because I love to get him on the job because he's just great. Been in the business forever, his dad did it, now his son's involved, so um, it's, a, it's a great operation and yeah. he likes working with Frank. So, so that, that screen that gets left down there, does it have to be maintained? Does it get cleaned out I mean, on a yearly basis, semi-annually? Or, or? That's a good question. Normally what, what Jeff's been doing is taking a couple of the wells or one of the wells every year and redeveloping it, and they have different uh, ways of doing you know, that. There are newer ways that you can use more of a, you know, a different type of a, a, a flushing system and to take out the, you know, um, to basically clean out the screen um, and then clean out the, and it, it's a kind of a surging and a drawing that they do on it, so it pushes the pressure away from the screen. Um, so it's it's um, it's easier. It's a good question. They you know there is things that you can do to maintain it. I think what we're finding is the specific capacity on the wells. If you don't maintain them and do the redevelopment, the gas passing can go down. And you're going to get less water flow out of them. So the best thing you can do is what Jeff's been doing is to, to redevelop the wells. Uh, you know as frequently as you need to and. We can also monitor the specific capacity through the years, and that's what we've done with some of our clients, and we recommend as soon as it gets to a certain point that you want to redevelop the wells, because if you don't and it goes farther, they won't recover as much. So, uh, so that's something we, we recommend. So how much, how much longer for well one then to, I mean, from now until it's completely done? Um, well, he's going to install it and do the pump test that will be done in May, then we'll submit the report. It's usually, we'll, we'll get the report in within a month, and then we normally, I mean, it's normally a two-month process for them to review it, yeah. but we can move forward assuming that the results are good and you don't anticipate that they won't with we'll starting the design, um, doing the, 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 the layouts and all. Um, we're kind of holding off on that until we get a better understanding as well, but, um, you know, that, we're not going to be critical of that now. I think it's more of a um, mass EDP. Yeah. But then once we go through with uh, the design, we have to submit it to them again and have them review that for a well completion. And uh, with, you know, we can't get their approval on it until, or until we get their approval on it, we can't put it up to date. So okay. we're, I think we're still targeting sometime next spring for construction. Okay. Uh, is what it is. We, I think we had anticipated a, a year to uh, a year and a half depending upon the schedule. So I think we're, we're in line for that still, uh, despite the slight delays that we've had during the initial phases. But um, we should be in good shape there. Cool. So then the next item on the agenda um, is the risk and resilience assessment, which, as I have presented in past meetings, is a requirement of the US EPA where all systems have to do a risk resilience assessment and for Dighton size systems, which is up to the medium size systems, about 50,000, just uh, short of that. Um, they have to complete the risk resilience assessment by June 30th, and then 
update the uh, emergency response plan by December 31st, or, or either that's the, the end date, but it'll be exactly six months after we certify that we've completed the risk resilience assessment, which we've been getting a lot of these, uh, and, and you know, I think that we're, I'm not really, we, we're going to be having the site uh, visits next Tuesday, we've scheduled those. And basically, um, we know a, a lot about it already, the system obviously, because we just did the water system master plan. But we're kind of looking at it on a different view, more on the vulnerability of the system. And that's going to target, uh, to a large extent, the SCADA and IT because of all the stuff that's been happening lately. And that's kind of what the focus of the EPA was. Back after 9-11, they were looking for more security and, and hard security measures, with fencing and, and whatnot. Now they're looking more at the, the cyber security and the IT stuff. So uh, we're going to take a look at that. What we've noticed on a lot of these is that you know a lot of people complain about it being a you know a, a unfunded mandate by the, by the feds. It is true. It's obviously something that you have to go through because you're required to. But what we're finding a lot of our clients, very similar to yours, are looking at their systems a little bit differently. And just the communication between your IT support or your SCADA support or you know. They're finding okay. We're not as, as protected as we thought we were. So it's it's good just to bring up the subjects to have the meetings to you know make contact with your subs that provide your um, IT or, or you're using your software and just to make sure that you're you're protected like you should be. Um, so we've had some good results for it, and, and you know you know it's been very beneficial to a lot of the systems that we've worked with. And in the end. The, the documents stay secure with you. It's just a certification to the uh, US EPA that um, Jeff will sign off on and we'll prepare all the certification forms and submit it by June 30th. And I don't have any issues with that um, completing by that date. So, um, And then the emergency response plan will just follow thereafter, as I mentioned, that if, if Jeff certifies on June 1st when we complete it, then it'll just have to be done by December 1st. Uh, um, six months after when it's submitted, um, and I don't foresee any, any issues with the, the schedules. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have any questions on that. It's a pretty straightforward process we've been doing for several systems, and um, we'll move forward and, and complete that as soon as we can. Yeah. No, I don't have any questions on that one. No. Okay. Um, I do have to apologize. In the last meeting, or one of the last meetings, I presented that uh, um, the Main Street project was funded by. Mass VP and I have to apologize. It was my fault. I looked at the list wrong, and you are below the fundable list. So it's not something that DEP is looking to fund now. But obviously, it'll stay on the list and could get funded next year. But what I told Jeff that I was going to do is that I'm also going to um, uh, look into um, the USDA um, they have a rural utility services grant process and. I'm going to communicate with them and find out whether the, the Main Street project would be fundable for it. I think that one of the things um, that helps is, um, you know, that is considered a disadvantaged community that you could potentially get some uh, good grant funding there. The good thing about that, too, is that if there is a possibility, uh, obviously it would take an expense to submit the grant application, which we've done before. It's an online process. But if if I talk to them and they think that it's favorable, I think it would be worthwhile because I've worked with communities where they got like 42 to 46% grant funding and low interest loans that will be extended out over a 40 year period as opposed to a 10 or 20 year term. Um, so that you'd be paying, um, especially with the rates being low right now. Yeah. The other thing that's good about being connected with the feds is that, you know, there is this infrastructure bill that may or may not happen down uh, in D.C. If it does, then you put yourself in a more favorable position if you submit and, and are granted funding for that. It might even become more grant money from all of the... So if we would, say, go through the grant process for the USDA, we would be ahead of the game if the infrastructure bill came out, is what you're saying? Yeah. What I'm understanding. So their, their schedule is, is that by say the beginning to the end of August of this year, you'd submit your grant application, mm -hmm. and they would award at the end of the federal fiscal year, which is September 30th, okay. October 1st. So, um, if they already have the project in, and it may be a viable project, um, you know, I, I this Norman uh, St. Jean is the um, 
New England rep it's, it's kind of, they split it up kind of funny. It's Mass, Rhode Island, Connecticut. He's actually in Connecticut, but he reps Massachusetts. And I'm working with him on the Massachusetts project right now. But I'll communicate with him and, and you know, get back to Jeff that he can forward the information along to you. Okay. If the project's favorable for them, might be something we might want to consider at the, uh, the next meeting. Okay. You know, we kind of want to get that ball rolling. Yeah, I know, and I know it's, and I, again, I apologize for my oversight, but, um, you know, I think that uh, it's a, it could be a good project for, for federal funding, especially now with the, the funding climate that could be getting better, so we'll yeah. see how that works. So. Um, but that's basically what I had. I, you know, I'd be more than happy to answer questions, or, again, if I, if you have something after the meeting, you can always give me a call. Okay. What was the first one that you said that we were below the fundable list? Uh, the, the Mass CEP drinking water SRF funding, okay. um, I looked at the list and saw you were there and, and, and didn't see the line that was about it. So, okay. uh, but that's not to say that it, 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 it won't move up next year and, and could be fundable if, if the USDA doesn't work out. So okay. we'll always keep that option. The Mass DEP one is just strictly for low interest loans, things like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No grants though? No. No. Yeah, that's a... It, they have um, actually um, low interest forgiveness loans too, which would, would be helpful. But I don't, I don't know what the, you know, obviously the project would have to be selected first, and then we can see what the conditions are for funding at that particular point in time. Okay. All right. That's so my. It was my only questions. Eric, do you have anything? I'm good. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated, yeah. as always. All right. We'll see you again soon. All right. Bye, Carl. All right. Thank you. Nice stuff. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Oh, uh, yeah. Toby is texting something. Oh, he can't hear us. Yeah. But, uh, sorry. But, uh, Toby. Thank you. 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 Thank just turn, just turn on your volume down and see. I'm just gonna get off. I'm just signing out. We'll just leave it there.
Right. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you guys can hear us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, Toby, go ahead. Well, thanks for having us back, sorta, in a virtual way. Um, wish we were there, but we're excited to be there actually tomorrow to get into the nuts and bolts. Um, I'll let Toby sort of give you an overview of um, where we are with the model and where we're going to be going tomorrow. And we promise a uh, wholesale um, in-person, if you're in-person, hopefully, next month of uh, where we've landed and some report um, level details uh, around where the model is. But I'll let Toby give you a, a rundown. Sure. So um, thank you, Scott. Basically, we have finished the construction of the model. It is, um, I think, in really good shape right now. And as you know, you guys provided a lot of information to us, both on budgetary and historical billing patterns. And um, we've taken that data and, you know, we've built Basically, uh, the, the model itself works as sort of two separate pieces. The first is um, really where we're projecting what we think you're going to need for revenue, and that's really a combination of the operational expenses um, that we expect going forward, um, the debt service that you currently have uh, in force, and that was all provided by you, the, the future operational expenses we did project, of course, but the debt service that exists is actually based on um, you know, it's based on real numbers from uh, from the borrowing institutions. And then um, to that, we've added in a CIP module, which is really the expected cost of future capital spending. And that was based on the master plan that Wright Pierce prepared for you. Um, and so we have everything that's in that report currently in the model, um, basically on the schedule that they were specifying with the costs that they were specifying. And, um, you know, we add those three things together and, and I wish I could show you, but basically the CIP module is probably the most complex in, in, the, uh, in the model itself. And, and its, basic, um, its basic function is to take basically a list of projects, a, a, um, a series of options as how you're planning to finance them and when you're planning to construct them. And then we turn that into a cash flow. And so all of these things happen in real time. And then so that's sort of the first piece and that gives you what we call the cost of service. And um, so that's, uh, that, that's sort of the, how much money we need to raise. And then the second piece is we then take that number, the how much money we actually need to raise and using a combination of potential future rate structures and historical billing patterns we then basically build re a revenue generation model. And um, you'll be able to see it tomorrow morning, of course, but within the model, as we discussed now, boy, probably six or seven or eight weeks ago, um, within the model now, we have the ability to model a whole host of different changes. So um, we can change within the model in real time, and you can see the, the impact on your financials um, we can change obviously anything in the CIP. If we want to move a big project back by a couple years, so be it. If we want to assume we're going to get a grant portion, so be it. If we want to debt finance it rather than cash finance it, easily done. They're all done via pull down menus and they change the cash, uh, sort of the cost of service needs uh, in real time. And then so on top of that, we layer in the ability to model the rates using your existing rate structure and show you what that we think that looks like over the course of the next 10 years. Uh, we have the ability to uh, give you a fixed charge. Um, we have the ability to um, change some of your policies, you know, change the included consumption within your, uh, within your base charge. And I think that's something we're going to want to look at because you'll, you'll be able to see we have a statistical breakdown of your past three years of consumption and uh, most of the water that, that goes out of taps in Dayton, uh, never they never pay a penny for. It's you know it's they're getting it under their under their biannual base charge, and so we, we can take a look at modifying that in order to get more billable water. We can take a look at changing the relative value of the tiers, and what I mean by that is so within your existing rate structure, the you know obviously what we call tier zero has no value because it's, in, it's the included consumption. But within your rate structure, the first tier, you currently are billing at 550 per thousand gallons. 
your second tier is at $6 a gallon. So you have basically a 9.1% premium there. And on the uh, tier three, uh, you have basically a 22.7% premium over tier one numbers. Now we can alternate those relative values in order to um, basically drive additional revenue. Um, but as I said, also we can put in a fixed charge and then we can take a look at what your, what your rates are gonna need to change in order to get to a healthy outlook, both on the minimum charges for both residential and industrial based on your current customer counts as well as your annual annual volumetric raises. And then on top of that, we overlay, obviously the very important revenue stream associated with your taxes based upon uh, last year's tax revenues and mill rate. And then we make a projection going forward from there. And all of those combine in to basically give you um, a revenue estimate that we can compare against um, compare against what we expect for expenses going forward, and so you know we'll be able to put up on the board what we think your current rates will do over the next ten years, and I, I don't think you're going to like it very much uh, if you go with the full CIP. So you know your real option is going to be modifying your rate structure or changing sort of the suggested CIP that was included in the EPG report. Um, and, you know, we, th those are things that, you know, obviously Woodard and Kern is agnostic on, but we can show you what we think the financial outcomes are associated with the many different variables that you have at your disposal to generate revenues. And as I said, we can change the relative values. You know, we could bump up tier two to a significant premium over tier one because you do bill, bill a fair amount in tier two. Um, not that much. You bill very little in tier three. So, there's not much we can do if we don't get rid of the um, 20 uh, the, the twenty units in uh, tier zero, as we call it. If we don't change that um, to drive more of the gallons into actual billable units, um, we're going to have a very tough time being able to fund the full CIP. And you know we can go through that uh, and we'll do all that tomorrow. We may need a little bit more than an hour. And so um, we have you know, I, I'm able to stay as long as the district is interested in having me present to run through options and talk about how the model works and, and show you how things um, sort of proceed. Both myself and my assistant, uh, Jim Aiken, will be there. And um, we're going to be bringing, obviously, a projector. And we were going to put this up on the big you know, one of your big walls. And uh, that way, we can all see it in real time. And, and Talk to one another about so anyone certainly all the commissioners are welcome uh certainly jeff is going to be there and and i assume maybe some some of jeff's staff i'm not sure but um obviously it's it's going to be a workshop it's going to be an open table discussion where we think we have a reasonable um actually a reliable financial projection model built based on current economics for you and um really about you know from that point it's all about taking a look at the what if scenarios and making decisions about how we're going to proceed on, on some of the big stuff that you have on your plate. What time is that tomorrow? 1030. 1030. Okay. And I believe we're going to be meeting there at Old Town Hall, if I'm correct, right? We are. Perfect. Uh, the, the thing I remember about that is you have a couple of big blank walls that would be great to project onto. That's funny. Is Derek, is, 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 is Derek planning on being there? Did you talk to Derek? Either he or you, I figured you were going to I'll ask Derek if he's going to be here. If not, Victor will come to And don't worry if. If everybody can't, and I'm not sure if you got a quorum challenge or an issue with that, I think I know that Jeff mentioned that there would be at least one commissioner there when we spoke. But, um, you know, everyone is welcome as long as you guys have no issue on a quorum or, or you know, open meeting or anything yeah, like open that. Open meeting would be my concern if we get too many, um, too many folks there. But, but we will certainly repeat it. I mean, we're trying to fine tune it and then move toward a report. Certainly next month at your open meeting, we'll absolutely be able to, you know, do the same process. We'll have refined it some, but we'll still be having the same dialogue because, you know, it obviously takes an action of your board to make any kind of movements toward actual modifications or, you know, take any of the recommendations and, and move forward with them.
Yeah, so tomorrow is basically a, a dry run to go through everything. Uh, tomorrow is basically to show you the model, yep. give you a chance to provide us feedback, tell us if there are additional things you might like us to assess, and then just to honestly to truth test some of the assumptions we made about you know growth in, in some of your revenue streams and um, the feasibility of some of the the rate changes that look like look like they're coming out of the model. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have the hiccups. <laughs> I do think that um, you know I think it, it'd be worthwhile to have uh, you know anyone who's involved in finance of the uh, of the district there um, for sure, um, and um, you know as many commissioners as we, as we can get who are willing to be there without violating open meetings law. And I don't know exactly what the provisions of that are for the district. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think also where we'll be starting is making sure that we're looking, there's some what if scenarios associated with the projects we've been assisting you with already. So I think the main street project that you've committed to doing, we've done a couple things since our last meeting. I know we're on the SRF, so clearly we're modeling borrowing that funding under the SRF program as one scenario. Yeah. Um, we subsequently did provide some back support for the requesting of an earmark um, under the con congressional earmark um, resurrection that we recently had here occur. And so I think last week that paperwork went in, who knows how that will shake out. I think it's, you know, everybody's trying to get an earmark. So not sure about how that will work out, but our fingers are crossed. Um, we also submitted a, a expression of interest for a new grant program that would fund small community um, design level effort for the design of that sewer. So, you know, that could yield a few hundred thousand dollars worth of value um, into the fray uh, for that project. We also are looking at um, drilling tomorrow. The driller will be walking the site for the potential well site. Um, we expect to drill there um, probably by the end of the month. So by the end of April, we're hoping to have the wells and see what production is there. And then likely, you know, with a favorable outcome, that conversation is, you know, development of those wells and obviously purchase of the property. We're working on a grant application, which I think you got last year, but it didn't, wasn't utilized because there was um, not en enough substantial water found at the site. But we are looking for a grant, um, preparing that documentation um, so that perhaps you'll get a couple of hundred thousand dollars toward the purchase. It might not be significant, but it, we, we have the ability to run that scenario through the model. And um, those are the two projects that we see as your near term sort of probably major yeah. investments. Any little bit helps, that's for sure. Uh, right. Do you happen to have a uh, PowerPoint or something that you could email us um, of what you're going to go over tomorrow. That way, for those that can't be there, um, that can possibly review it and ask questions. Uh, I, I I don't. Um... It's more of a dynamic modeling exercise. Like here's where we see you with all the CIP items that were in your master plan extrapolated out over the window of, you know, the next twenty years. Um, and it's more dynamic plug in plug and play type of. Um, exercise tomorrow but we could get some screenshots perhaps you know and then send that along after the fact or something like that toby maybe um yeah i i, I suppose we could do that with no problem i, I think this the screenshots af after the initial discussion i think it would be the more valuable piece right because right now all we have is a model that's really sort of set up for here's what we see the base conditions are for the community right now, or for the district, pardon me. And, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be incredibly important to get feedback from you before we start throwing out anything that would be foilable. Um, believe me, I've seen this, you know, we, we, we want to just be careful about putting in what, what would be considered or what could be considered by people a formal presentation, yeah. which has completely misleading information in it so right okay. and people would misconstrue your intention of rate increases i think what you'll see is that as toby said and i don't think it'll be a surprise to you if you know the wish list is large and the impact on your rates if you were to carry them particularly in a borrowing type of scenario going forward would be burden would be probably as i would imagine you would view them as overly burdensome and yeah. not desirable to bring to your constituents 
Yeah, no, agreed. And I think it'll come down to the decision as we move forward is we're going to have to pick and choose as, as to which, which items we're going to have to fund and, and put in the study. So, right. And they can always be adjusted going forward. And maybe, you know, the plan is kind of look at where do they plug in so that you can maintain a, um, a reasonable increase over time, you know, recognizing that in order to stay up with those projects, but you don't want to have too many big ones front loaded and keep running with the big ones, you know, kind of stagger them out and, and pay some debt service and then, you know, manage that, manage that financial scenario such that your rate increase is something that's tolerable. Um, otherwise it, it's just out of control. So right. I think that's okay. the kind of stuff we're going to look at. Other, otherwise people will just, well, whether it needs to be done or not, they will not like the idea that you're doing any more investing at some point. Right. Uh, and they'll, they'll try and squash needed investment. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're kind of, we're kind of making up for lost time here too. Um, yep. So it's going to be, going to have a, a, a double-edged sword effect. So. And that's yeah. the deferred maintenance catch up that every utility is faced with. Um, yep. And that's the challenge everyone has. And you just don't have a big enough, um, you know, some utilities can figure that out because they have a big enough base of, of uh, service connections, and that's not the case for you. It's challenging, but um, but we'll work through it and we'll get there. Um, we'll find something that works works for your um, for your customers and gets you yeah. moving in the right direction. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the combination here that we end up with is basically a recommended list of projects that we think you can afford going forward based on on a set of rates, because obviously in the end, the model ends up, you know, sort of, uh, there's a tab in it called the sensitivity analysis where we do most of the analysis. Uh, everything else, there's a bunch of other tabs that are running background algorithms. So, you know, if we change the size of your tiers to make them a little smaller, to push more water into either the paying tiers or the higher level tiers, um, those automatically recalculate, you know, how many gallons you're going to sell in each of the new size tiers and, and recalculates the revenue based on the proposed rate adjustments. And, and you'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through the, before we get into any sort of analysis tomorrow, we're going to walk through the model and how it works so that you all understand what the purpose is and then understand how do we make decisions on rates because it's really, it's less about making next year work, it's more about making sure that in the long run, you have a combination of rate increases that not necessarily are super acceptable, but can support the, you know, can support the capital that you're actually intending to do. And uh, because the capital is going to be what's driving the rates here, there's no doubt about that. Um, the investment that's done in, in the, you know, is based on the deferred investment that Scott referred to. Um, you know, catch up is always painful, um, and you know we'll we'll walk you through how to help or help you understand. You know what? Okay, well, if we do this project but not these three, and or if we take this one that was we were planning on cash financing, and uh, actually debt finance it, here's what that does because those obviously hit your cash flow statement, and hence your um, reserve balances in a very very substantially different way. And so the model takes all those things into account and. Um, Basically, at the end of the day, it, it gives us a projection of your financial performance for the next 10 years based on the, the combination of revenue design and expected costs. Okay. Um, thanks for that information. Um, is that? Good. Is there any, would you guys rather do this as a group? I think doing it as a group would be better. Yeah, so honestly. For sure. I know it's only a breath, but I, I would like to have Derek there and, and Eric yeah. and myself. It's, a, it's, an, it's an important, it's kind of an important thing. <laughs> Not kind of, it is an important thing. Is there, is there any way we can reschedule this so I, I can post it on an open meeting law and um, the commissioners all can attend? I, I'm I, almost with impunity. You can reschedule. Okay. I'm, I'm in Massachusetts now uh, every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, this Thursday is spoken for. Uh, how, how, how far in advance do you need to post for open meeting? 48 hours. Okay. So yeah, this, this Tuesday is, or this Thursday is spoken for, although I could, I could do, hold on, let me, uh, 
I could do Friday morning, but I would need to probably be on my way back. Uh, I'm taking my son to a college to. Uh, Don't worry about it. Friday's a no go. I got to be in Springfield all day. Okay. How about how about um how about Tuesday. like next Tuesday the twentieth in the morning? Yeah, I was gonna say Tuesday the twentieth might um might mm -hmm. work out fine. Yes. Double check this Tuesday the twentieth. Fine. I got. It. I can push that. I can push that. Absolutely. In the morning, you can have you can have the whole way until two o'clock on Tuesday of the twentieth. Oh, so oh, that's good. What's that? I'm gonna do like eleven to two. Yeah. Or, what time? I can be. I, I think any. I can be. I can be reliably the Dayton by ten o'clock in the morning. Um, maybe ten thirty is a little safer. I mean, there's not much traffic these days, but um, I think I can be reliably the Dayton by ten. So if we wanted to schedule for ten. Uh, we'd have a, we'll have a short setup time to get the projector set up and all that, but um, that way we would have as much time as you wanted, certainly till lunchtime. And if you wanted to go all the way till two on Tuesday, that that time slot's pretty much open for me. All right, so ten o'clock on Tuesday the twentieth. That sounds good. Sounds sounds good to us. Okay. So does this mean that we can't do it here? Can we do it at the? We can't do it at the plant, can we? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Do you want to pull? We can put that on the calendar. Do you want to make sure everybody is available? I can confirm in the morning. Yeah, it's good. For, yeah, we're good. Um, okay. I, know, I know I can make it. I'm, I think yeah, Derek, Derek, so that's two out of the three. And that's, that's more than likely. Yeah, I'm sure Derek. Yeah. Okay. That works good for me. Okay. Does that mean we're not coming down tomorrow morning then? Correct. Okay. Very I, well. The flexibility, that's for sure. Uh, no problem. problem. I, I apologize. This, I, I think we had a slight miscommunication on our end when we, we set this initial appointment and didn't let Scott know. So uh, that's our fault. All good. No, it's fine. Um, Jeff, we're doing the, the driller is walking um, tomorrow with our guys. So if you want to, um, I may come down. For that walk, if you're gonna. Okay. Be what what time is that? Eight thirty. I think um I think that was I think it was ten I think it was ten thirty but I'll send you a, an email Jeff and I'll verify it. Yeah. I think I'll I'll be there tomorrow. I'm more prepared tomorrow. So. I'll give you text. It might even have been a little bit earlier. So I'll double check. I think it's eight thirty. Eight thirty. I believe. Okay. I, they didn't send me an invite for that either. I'm trying to still work through. <laughs> Massasoit Road at 8.30. Okay. Oh, and then my call is that. Okay. Yeah, I think they thought they'd be out there for a few hours anyway, just checking the location. All right. That's good. Thank you. That's good. 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 Awesome. Great. Thanks. Well, we'll All, right. Sweet, then. All right. Thanks. Look forward to the 20th. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Does that stay on? It'll just keep recording the meeting, so it's fine. But you're already recording back there, correct? I am. Just to uh, clarify one thing, we weren't below the line on the SRO. We were the last one. We were above the line. So what? So why did I don't know. Okay. What what moves what moves the line? They they select it's like a point system where they select a certain uh, group uh, a project not a group a project to to fund yeah and I mean I can show you some of certain projects need to be uh, rated and scored yeah and we were the right. last one right we were rated. Yeah, the line we were there. So we're above. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Why does he think we're below? Is he just read? Did he read it wrong? Reading it wrong? Okay. We're wrong. Okay. We're in the Okay. All right. Uh, that's that's better than this. <laughs> <laughs> so that is those are the two guests. I don't know if we want to newly elected selectman. I was telling Mr. Hall. Um, if he, uh, 
I don't know if you want to speak uh, as a guest or do you want to wait for public input or what? I would prefer to speak under public input. Sounds good. We can do that. Simply because I'm here tonight as a resident. Okay. Um, I don't want to speak on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Okay. I haven't attended a, an actual meeting yet. Okay. But I want to become informed. But I do have a couple questions on the one about the project survey on Main Street okay. and also about the annual election. But okay. I'll, I'll wait until the input. That's okay? That's fine. Sure. Perfectly okay. fine. All right. All right. Approval. Approval of the minutes of the prior meetings. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of March of the March 8th monthly meeting? So moved. Uh, I'll step down and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of March 8th of the March 8th executive session meeting? So moved. And I'll step down and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, reading of the correspondence. Anyone have any correspondence to, to read? No. Okay, nothing? Okay. All right, financial conditions. Operating budget to actual balances. Income for the first nine months of the fiscal year is $1,974,018.74. Uh, with expenses at $1,887,396.55, which is 70.7% of our budgeted expenses. Receivables, as of March 31st, outstanding receivables are $75,742.73. Month's commitments, $8,101.05. And water receivables for the month were five uh, fifty-three thousand four hundred dollars and ninety-seven cents. Is there a motion to accept the financial reports as presented? So moved. And I'll step down and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Is there a motion to approve the expenditure warrants as presented? So moved. And I'll step down in a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Superintendent's report. Jeff. Okay. Uh, we just completed a uh, leak protection survey as of Friday. And it went quite well, actually. Uh, wasn't a, he didn't find a lot of leaks, but he did find um, one that he estimated at around 30 gallons a minute. We fixed it already. That was the one on 44? Yeah. Then he fixed that Friday. Okay. And he was spot on, on, the, on the correlation. Do we know how long that was there by chance? No. Nope. Nope. It was just following the ground, never surfaced. Could have been a while. Could have been a while. So you said it's 30 gallons. I'm just doing, yeah, some, I mean, I'm just doing some quick math. <laughs> Greg found another leak uh, Thursday, fixed that Friday as well. And uh, That's 43,000 gallons a day? Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's 30 gallons a minute. Can, I mean, we're probably 30 times 60, it's 1,800 an hour times 24 hours. I'd say about 18 million gallons a year or something like yeah, 40, that. It's a lot. 43,000 a day. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot. Yeah. So we think we found around 50 gallons or, or so or more uh, worth of leaks, which is probably somewhere around 30, gall 30 million gallons a minute. So we did yeah. good. Uh, so that so that 30 that 30 gallons a minute, that one on 44, comes out to 15.7 million gallons a year. Just a lot. Just that one leak. Just a lot. Yeah. 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 So, it's, uh, so he's he's got a schedule to come in every year, and we got one of those. And for short money, I think that's it was, uh, the wisest thing to do. I think we'll start. Um, I mean, to put in to put in perspective, Cedar One is pumping thirty-five gallons a minute right now. Oh. 
That's crazy. Pretty significant. You don't think of 30 gallons a minute as much, and most time, you know, when I worked in Easton, like I said before, we could probably pump 4,000 gallons a minute at any one time. Mm -hmm. right. A town of the size of Somerset, bigger town, but the same amount of residents. You know, it's, it's, we, we didn't know, we, we had a million gallon, gallon leak on at one point, and we, didn't, we couldn't find it, and we were keeping up. Yeah. So, but putting in perspective that we're pumping 35 gallons a minute out of one of our wells, we just saved the one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, it, it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. What did you, what did you like figure that we were losing? Uh, there was a percentage you put out before. 24.1% yeah. was our ending percent. Um, I think, I think you'll see it drastically. We have to wait till the end. We won't go to wait. Right. <laughs> right. Um, um, sure. it's, it's, it's going to be. Uh, plus, our uh, we had our meters calibrated in the plants last week, and there was a three percent uh, difference. So that's another we can knock that off as well. Oh, Those three percent variation in the, in the plant meter is to what we what it was doing. So I can knock that off as well. Is that just from a, cal is that from a calibration perspective? Yeah, not, or not being calibrated. It was or? off three percent. Okay, in our favor. So okay. I can I can take that off on that. How often do we get that calibrated? Once a year. Once a year? Yeah. Customary once a year. All of our uh, mag, all of our meters we do once a year. Okay. Uh, so we're flushing April 26th. Uh, we're starting our flush. Uh, we'll stop putting, uh, and we did send a notice, but we're going to post it around town. I didn't want to do it too early because you get a little amount to it, so we're probably going to do it now. End of this week. I'd say the week before or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got a point there. I mean, if it's up for three weeks, everyone just kind of. Yeah, after the first weeks, yeah. Yeah, the road closed on Saturday. Yeah. Sure. Right. April 26th, we hope uh, to May 14th, but hopefully it won't take that long. I'm kind of preparing for three weeks. Where are we, uh, where are we, I don't know, is there a, a, a certain place to yeah, start? Yeah, we're, we're, we're starting at we're starting with the plant out. Okay. Um, and that's all the hydrants, correct? Yeah. We're gonna, until we have a real survey done, it's, it's, we're going to kind of jump hydrants. Okay. It'll help. Uh, when are we, uh, is that a night nighttime operation? Uh, approximately 7 p.m. to 3 in the morning. Okay. And the reason we have flushing sooner is because Cedar 3 being down and how busy Sullivan's been. Mm -hmm. He's working on Cedar 3 right now. At the previous meeting we've had to rehab Cedar 3. Uh, the, pump, the pump dropped off on it, uh, so he has the pump out right now. It's in the shop and we had to order some uh, parts and a new pump. And uh, once that's in, we can flush. So we'll, um, Every year it seems to be something at this time of year that has conflicted with flushing. Last year we had a filter down. Yeah. This year the C3 went down, but that's why I pushed, pushed it back uh, as late as we did. We should be flushing right now if there's no way to do it on C3. And we have, we have the manpower in the plant to make yeah. up for the water, to make the water once, because we're obviously going to lose a lot of water flushing. Oh, yeah. okay. uh, it's, it's a necessity. I mean, you hear, you hear the complaints about not flushing. Yep. And then when we do flush, we may hear complaints that it's, you know, we're in a drought and we're flushing. So <laughs> if you don't flush, the mains get tuberculated. Yeah. 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 It just, it, it is. Well, we, we got to do it this year because we didn't do it last year. And yeah. we're going to get brown water. I mean, you're obviously going to get brown water complaints when we flush. Um, is there anything that we can do to be proactive with the brown water complaints or just kind of take it as on a case by case basis or we have signs out there saying we're flushing. Yeah. We have signs that we made up we just gonna form around town. Yeah. It's kind of one of those I was driving through Middle I was driving through Middleborough and they said the same thing, just hydrant flushing. Yeah. Expect brown water. So it has the same signs expect brown water. Yeah. Expect brown water. Okay. And it, it won't it won't be it's minimal. Um, I don't know the meter calibration. calibration. Uh, we're meeting with the web developer uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. next Wednesday. Wednesday. So we're 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 actually moving along pretty good with the new website. We're we're, we're using the same 
company that the town used. Uh, so hopefully, it's a, it's a nice, simple website. Yeah, I like the look already. What are they supposed to be done? When are they supposed to be done? Like 13 to 20 meetings? Yeah. Oh, so they're coming, back. they're coming back for an update. This We're is the first meeting of, you know, I already sent them what we are looking for. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Good. they have designed a little bit something. It's like cool. the first draft, the rough yeah. draft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it won't be, I mean, obviously we'd like to be here now, but we at least got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Good. So, obviously, I'm going to have to go to the rate study. That is, uh, and just to reiterate, we did get a grant for that rate study. The grant was uh, an 80 20 split, so we paid 20 cents on the dollar for that. That was a very good move. Um, we got Brick Street, heard that. I'll be moving that tomorrow. I do, I've been told, I'm hoping, kind of praying for that. I wish they were already drilled, but end of the month, beginning of the month. I've been told, I'm hoping in the month that you're like, we know what's there. Have we heard anything, any pushback or anything from the Somerset lawyers or, or anything? Okay. Somerset's uh, changing a little now, so hopefully it'll be a little more. Uh, any progress on using their well <laughs> that has awesome, awesome water? Possibly maybe. We'll see. Okay. There's a new, new administration coming, so we'll see. So did they? So they had their election this past, their water district election. No, not yet. Not yet. I think it's this week. Oh really? And the main, obviously the main street, uh, we we applied for a grant. Uh, not a grant. The earmark. Scott was saying. Uh, but the engineer said it was the first round. I just threw some money out and there's earmarks. And there are a lot of the earmarks. Yeah, I'm not really savvy to this stuff, but. Um, kind of why we use women of color and they look for this stuff. That's yeah. all they do is look for this stuff. I cannot, I, I can't stress enough to have an engineering firm as proactive as they are. Yeah. I mean, there's things we do out there, it's all day. You're, you're running around, you're working the plant, you're running, you're dealing with, they just come, hey, I got, I'm going to put you in for a grant. So yeah, we look for them, but does he just do it? Do you have a list of the grants that they've put in for us? He put in for the design phase grant, which he said would cover the design, which would we'll say around three hundred thousand dollars. So they put in for that. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get an earmark. So what what we did was we had to reach out to our reps, mm -hmm. our representatives. Um, that Marco Chico, Patricia Haddad, yeah. representative, and uh, and they were more than gracious enough, gracious enough to give us endorsements. Okay. Um, and the town as well. They uh, they don't have anything really coming up right now, so nothing. It didn't conflict with uh, you know. We weren't competing, so I was on Zoom with them last week. And, you know, the, the board of selectmen signed uh, a nice letter in support of this project. We could, um, you know, frame <laughs> could be quite a bit of money to help with that project. It's strictly for the Main Street project. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. How's the uh, Aggie School going? Oh, <laughs> they tore down a small animal recently. That's gone. What's that? Small animal? I don't know. If it, if you're not familiar, the, the building is called Small Animal, and that's where the dogs, uh, if you have a dog, yeah, you have to send them that. Yeah. Uh, that building's gone. Really? Yeah. Um, and that, I believe that's going to be a parking lot. I don't know. I don't know what they mean. Actually, actually kind of got into old business when I asked that question. But What's that? So said I actually kind of got into old business looking at the... Uh, oh, the that's good. Right. Right. About the first line. No, that, that probably... I mean, you can ask me that question for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be continually doing work for a while. Okay. Good project. All right. That's all. Right. That's all you have? I mean, I can probably come up with a lot of stuff, but I my brain is. No, no that's good. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Well, meetings, meetings, meetings. All right. Mm -hmm. Old business. Um, we talked about Brist uh, Bristol County Ag. Um, T-Mobile antenna renewal, anything with that? Um, I have it 
out to T-Mobile and wait for them to fly back. Okay. We've gone back and forth a few times. Okay. We're not giving them any more money back, are we? Oh, no, we're asking for more money. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, need an upgrade program, anything new on that as far as uh, installing the old, uh, the new old meters, I guess? No. Okay. Um, budget, fiscal 2022 draft is presented. I think we're all still going through that, looking at it, going around. What's the, the final date on that? Would we have to be done? The, the next meeting would be good. Okay. Well, we can actually go over it, then we'll just have to make a meeting. We have to sign seven days, okay. we have to close seven days before the meeting. Yeah, I just want to put it on here that, you know, let's, let's have everything by next meeting that way we're not pushing yes. it, kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. No one likes the budget stuff, but got to get it done. Okay, that's it for old business, new business, other post-employee benefits investing. Is that something Derek brought up or? No. That's um, what you emailed us, right? I emailed you the, the presentation from Bartholomew. Um, the town does that. Most towns do it. They invest the money. You're allowed to invest your OPEP. Oh, okay. Uh, yep, yep. Um, I just hadn't done it because we didn't really have that much and I'd like to get it in there. I said we had a CD before. It's in the CD right now. Yeah. Okay. So do we each have to take action on that? Um, or just no, I'm just just for our reference. Yeah, for our information. Just you guys okay. Are good. I'm fine. Yeah. You can wait. Uh, is this a, uh, next month? Is that okay to wait? How about oh, yeah. you can make a motion, but that's not being. Yeah, we can do it next month. That's fine. You can make a motion. We want to make a motion to extend it. Yeah. Or no, okay. no, I don't need anything. Allow the team next to invest. Well, not you. You know. Oh, okay. gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So we don't need to do that now. Okay, yeah, let's do it next month. We'll do it next month. Here. Um, announcements. Next regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Get your calendar up. Get the calendar up. <laughs> you say you have Thursday, May 13th at 6 p.m. if it works for everybody. May 16th. Or May 13th is May 13th. Thursday night. And I am good on Thursday night at, on the 13th. I can do that. And Derek can do that. We'll, we'll, we'll make him do that. I think so. I'd, I'd rather be in person. I'd rather be in person. Yeah, so would I. Zoom stuff's good for a little bit, but just like a regular work meeting, I'd rather be in person. Okay. It looked like it was open. This the was open. Okay. Um, so we're okay with the 13th at 6. The district annual election will be held on May 17th, 2021. Um, what is that, 7 a.m.? It's from noon to 7 p.m. Noon to 7? Okay. Noon to 7 p.m. And then we'll be up at the plant, correct? Yes. Okay. And the annual district meeting will be May 27th. So May is going to be full, huh? Mm. Yes. All right. And that's, uh, I'm guessing, a Tuesday night? That's a Tuesday night. Uh, I usually try to do it. It's a Thursday night as well, too. Yeah, yeah, that's a Thursday night as well. And what time is that? That'll be seven. Seven. Okay. May twenty-seven. Uh, Water district. and public input. Select and all.
Well, oh, well, actually, Mr. Hall, right? As speaking as a right. resident, correct? Yes. Okay. yes. Um, my name is Leonard Hall, 760 Main Street, Dighton. I have a couple questions. One, the annual election is May 17th. If anyone wanted to run, uh, when would they need to have their papers in? That deadline has since last passed. Day. The deadline has passed. Was that your thing? I'm sorry? They can run on stickers if they like, but the deadline oh, right. was last week. They could enter it a sticker. Yeah. Uh, the second question has to do with the Main Street survey. Um, do you know when that will be completed? The, for, for us or for the town? The town survey, I believe they have their limited survey. Yeah. We, ours is a little different. I was talking to uh, Scott and Garris, who's the wood in the car, though they were on the computer earlier. Mm -hmm. He's telling me that it may be beneficial for us to do a survey before not knowing about some of the grants we could get. But it's again, it's, it's one of those things in the United States, the bulk of the the possible 300,000 grants. It's, it's a lot of that. That's the bulk of the. Um, the budget for the uh, operational cost of, of building, not, not operation, uh, the design. The design, I'm the sorry. Design. Okay. That's the bulk of that uh, cost, so we take we run a gamble of spending money when we may actually receive it. So we don't have a time, so basically we don't have a time frame yet for the survey. I will ask him to okay. tomorrow. Uh, he was going to speak on it today, and I forgot, and he forgot, but as it, far as like, like I just said, we could. It's a question of spending money where we may not have that. Okay. You know, so, you know, so what if yeah. we? Well, Mr. Hall brings up a good point, though. If if we do, if we want to be proactive now and do it now, spend the money, mm -hmm. assuming that we have it. I don't know. I, I'm guessing it's a yeah. if it's a survey, it's fifteen thousand dollars, whatever it's going to be. Do we? Can we spend it now to be proactive and get it done, and then get reimbursed? For it. I don't know if we can get reimbursed. Let me, uh, let me. His concern with the survey was actually getting surveyors right now. So he, he wanted to push forward to to be, uh, to do it proactively. Sure. Because it may it may get pushed back because there's so much work on it. Right. Um, I will ask him tomorrow. That is a question. I will yeah. Find out. Ask him tomorrow. Yeah. Find out. Try to get some ballpark numbers. Yeah. Because there's also a sidewalk improvement project going on Main Street, mm -hmm. so we're, we're trying to dance. We're trying to dance around that project now. We, I mean, we're trying to it's the trying to get our work done and figure it out before Mr. Ferry wants to do needs to do his work, and we're, we're yeah. It's a it's not a chicken and egg kind of thing, but it's we're trying to work hand in hand, try to do everything. Well, at the same time. we're going to have to go first before any any of the. Uh, now, you mentioned the town has to do a survey as well? They've done their portion, yes. Oh, okay. They, I believe they have. I mean, okay. No, they have. We saw plan. Remember, we yeah. were sitting looking at plans. You know, they have yeah. plans together and everything. So. They have a plan. Yeah. So, it's more a case of Water District doing their survey and then coordination with the town. Correct. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of the waiting on it had to do with getting listed, not getting it where we got listed on the SRF, and then it was. But you're listed, from yeah. what I heard earlier yes. in the meeting. And then, after getting listed, that took forever. And then Col the, the DEP is, was so far behind uh, doing their due diligence on, on uh, list, the projects that I mean, the list is this long. So they, it, it's just taking a lot longer this year for the for, uh, I was talking with Senator Pacheco over the weekend. And infrastructure money, if it can pass at the federal level, he said there'll be significant money coming to Massachusetts, and he was going to fight for the district, uh, his district, to make sure they got their fair share. Mm -hmm. So that's promising. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, if you put it in perspective what the cost of the treatment plant was, it was $7 million, that, that road's going to cost over four, around four. And four million dollars to replace the water. The treatment plant costs seven. So that's how much prices have gone. Right. Yeah. Well, it's significant. Yeah, that the water that main 
water or yeah, that water main or main. <laughs> yeah, <probably laughs> say that five times <laughs> main. Holy cow! Uh, it's not a cheap. Yeah, that, we had what four million dollar. Uh, uh, it's around yeah around four million dollar. We did initial you know survey, not survey, but a, a report put together. They what estimated we, about four million dollars. So that's going to be a cost of front. Yes. Very costly. Yeah. Very costly. So that's why again we're seeing this infrastructure. Uh, Earmark is so big for the district, right. yeah. and we are the, the one of the uh, one of the benefits we have with the grant uh, the earmark was that we are a disadvantaged community as far as uh, income levels. We're, we're considered a disadvantaged community, right. so mm -hmm. that helps. Keep well, going, we'll keep really pushing, getting those grants and getting, like, like, like Jeff said, you know, Woodard and Kern, they're pretty, they're pretty solid, they're pretty proactive. And, and and again, again, when you at, and I, I'll chuck, but when, you know, I would look into it, it would cost a small fee. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They just, I cannot, I don't know why anyone isn't working with everyone isn't working with well, that. There's money out there. There is, there is. Yeah. Especially with the infrastructure. Uh, package coming out too. With the yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. You, you can reach out to me anytime you want. I, yes, because it, it is a learning process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I'm actually glad to have people here. This is, it's a, <laughs> I mean, honestly, we, we very rarely well, get public. Welcome, uh, here. One of the things that's so important, because there's so many rumors and half truths to get out there, yeah. Yeah. is to get the word out to yeah. improve communication. Yeah. And I, I will add, I really like the card that summarized all the projects that the water district has going on. Yeah, that's what we, we just started doing that. That's what we could fit. Yeah. Yeah. We ran out of We could do that even half right now. Well. Uh, and, and you had, you touched on the point is you see so many myth truths or rumors and right. we're, we're trying to, we're trying to, uh, you know, put it all out there so everybody gets all the right information. And that's the least we could do is put a mailer out, I mean, once or twice a year, maybe three times a year, whatever mm -hmm. it's going to be. So, um, trust us, we don't, we, we like to water our grass and we like to keep rates low, um, but there's always a, there's a juggling act there that we're, we're going to have to try to keep up. So. Yes. Our, our new website is actually going to have, um, and you can sign, sign up for email alerts. Yep. So anything that's going on will get emailed to you. Mm -hmm. If we have uh, an outage somewhere, I don't like saying the word, but right. you know, <laughs> Main Street, you know if you <laughs> right? oh, yeah. if uh, a disturbance in the water, <laughs> we'll be able to notify the people who have signed up. That would be pretty powerful. Anyway. And I hear what you're saying about the brown water during flushing. That happens everywhere. Okay. Some of us that's going through it right yeah. now. No one's yeah. into it. Yep. No yeah. One's into it. Yeah. 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 Thank All you. Right. Alright, thank you Sean, appreciate Welcome. the questions, absolutely. I noticed based on your agenda, you have an executive session, so. Yeah, we're heading in there now. <laughs> thank All you. Right. I appreciate thank it. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, motion to go into executive session under provisions of Chapter 30A, Section 21A. So moved. And I'll step down in a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Open session will not reconvene. Yeah, I like